Uh, welcome everyone. Good afternoon and uh, good evening. Um, today we have with us uh, Agela or Angela Halkiopoulou. Uh, she is a teacher, creative educator, a researcher of children's literature, and a creative director of, uh, to the Institution of Little Odysseus. She studied English literature at the Aristotle University in Thessaloniki, Greece, and at the same time studied visual communication in the Private Institute Applied Art Studies in Thessaloniki. Her love for her experiential learning led her to the creation of an original children's creative learning center, Alice's Nest, in Mytilini, Lesbos, Greece. She later moved to Cyprus, where she created Little Odysseus, and a series of programs. Okay, so are you, are you in, in Writer's Mytilini Land? Don't have audio or... Alice in Writer's Land with a focus to a future literacy that uses today's creative toolbox and harnesses the wisdom of culture and art. Among her many awards, she, is the, she has received the Global Teacher Award in 2022 by AKS Educational Awards. Um, thank you, Agela, for being our artivist for today. Um, welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Um, let's start by... Uh, quoting something that Kurt uh, Vonnegut wrote. Um, he wrote that the arts are not a way to make a living. Uh, they are a very human way of making uh, life more bearable. Uh, this is a very <laughs> important thing for me. Uh, practicing an art, no matter how well or badly, is a way to make your soul grow. Uh, and he he continued uh, for for heaven's sake, sing in the shower, dance to the radio to a radio to a radio song, tell stories, write a poem to a friend, even a lousy poem, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Uh, do it as well as you possibly can. You will get an enormous reward. It is an inner reward for me, and then this reward can be an and a reward of all of us, for all of us. Uh, you will have created something. So for me, art is first of all, empowerment. And from the minute you are empowered, you can empower everybody around you. And this is the core of my program. Alice in Writer's Land is a course inspired by Alice in Wonderland, of course, because books are places full of wonder for me. I use stories as an inspiration and by stories, I mean both words and illustrations. Both of them help children create their own system of uh, understanding, of uh, learning, of creating. And the art of stories become uh, vehicles of ideas, of concepts, of human values, of emotions. Uh, beginning with a book, a story, which is an inspiration, I usually lead the children to multiple art expressions. Uh, there are times uh, when a story becomes a word, music, movement expression. Uh, stories that become art museums, stories that become art installations. Uh, heroes and heroines travel to fantasy maps, maps of emotion or maps of storylines. Uh, there are even times where uh, atlases appear to convey heroes and heroines and stories and to be a part of something bigger. Uh, we can play uh, the aura of a hero or heroine in a digital, digital musical multi-instrument that we have now. Uh, and, or we can watch children's, uh, children's documentary to combine real life with fantasy. We can make a, a short movie or a story we like, or we create a magazine newspaper as we did the last two, two years with the journalist of the future. Uh, all this art related, all this art related experience uh, frees the children from the typical, the standard education with the education that we have in Cyprus and in Greece, creating the possibility of a change. This is what I would like, the possibility of the change. Everything, um, every time I get into a new class, I get, oh my God, 
<laughs> as uh, Alice said, um, uh, I say to them, you have to unlearn. You have to unlearn, not to learn. To, un uh, to unlearn because they, they, they don't know how to cooperate. They don't know how to work as a team. They don't know how to share things. They don't know how to express themselves. They don't know the meanings of concepts, the meanings of ideas. They don't know, uh, they cannot describe you simple words. So where are we? I want to open their minds to fantasy, to creativity, to expression. This is the future literacy. Information is nowadays everywhere. It can be reached practically by everyone. So why give exams with closed books? Why memorize all this vast information, which is not possible for the majority of the students? Even if they memorize it, they memorize it for a very few time, for a little time, and then they forget everything. The idol of the future education will be how to choose from all this information. What to observe, with observe, not see, observe. How to combine knowledge and what to create. This is critical and creative thinking for me. And critical and creative thinking, who can teach this to? Art. Art can teach. Because art can cultivate talents, can expand learning abilities, can build aesthetic. Aesthetics, I, I am amazed because um, many times I see teachers uh, do so, um, um, take such poor um, uh, works um, uh, and cannot give to the kids the aesthetics that they should uh, uh, be, um, that they should give. Um, art can convey values. Uh, it can be an unbelievable educational toolkit. Using this toolkit, uh, I have witnessed many different metamorphoses of children in multicultural schools, in special education units, in refugee camps, or simple elementary schools. Everywhere, kids change with art. Seeing kids find themselves in art. They express themselves in many different ways. I use comics. I use comics I, I, all the time. Um, I use many, many different, uh, I use even, um, as you described uh, a little bit earlier, uh, Argyro, um, their kind of music. I make them TikTokers. Okay, be a TikToker. <laughs> Speak to me as a TikToker. <laughs> make uh, uh, um, uh, TikTok bookers. <laughs> Present a book to me. As a TikToker, why not? Why not? Why don't we use uh, nowadays um, media to express themselves? Uh, I want them to express themselves. This is the basic thing. I want to give them um, to have for them to have a goal in life. This is very important for me. Um, I know that they will find themselves through art. This is what I'm doing. Would you like me to show the video? Yes, this is the time for the video. You see it, right? Yes. Mm 
Ah, uh, thank you, Agela. I do want to say that you, I hope you will notice the poster in um, the little film that Agela showed us is uh, the one that Artivism selected for the spring season. Do you want to tell us a little bit about what that poster was about? The whole, uh, you know, what yeah. books they read, how David Bowie was an inspiration? Um, we started um, a conversation with uh, the journalists of the future about how to create uh, a poster. Uh, we wanted to give, um, um, we were talking about messages, about different things that we want to promote. And uh, I said to them, let's choose um, a person that we admire. Um, and uh, some of them, suggested that we search through internet to find uh, a figure that we think that we, it is uh, most suitable for this. Uh, we came across uh, um, a David Bowie poster that uh, um, I, I have uh, and I admire very much. Um, and uh, they, they were asking me questions about David Bowie. Of course, they didn't know about him. <laughs> so <laughs> I had um, to, to say to them, so, okay, you are journalists, so you have to search for him. So make your own research. And they um, uh, brought back to me amazing things. Songs, lyrics, and um, uh, they brought back to me um, some uh, a document documentary. We saw a documentary of he uh, of himself um, uh, for his art and how um, he created uh, um, uh, empowerment art and, and a different kind of ma of art. Uh, he was always, you know, um, uh, the the um, the artist that um, uh, was. Uh, presenting something different every time and were su surprising everyone. And this is what uh, kids liked the most because uh, surprise, they think, um, is missing from today's, you know, artists. And they were amazed how he didn't, uh, he was fashionable, but he wasn't in fashion <laughs> and he was changing fashion every time and he was changing his persona. Uh, and this is all um, created a great interest for him. Uh, we read the lyrics, uh, the lyrics of his songs. Uh, we made a research on his life. Um, and we um, made this poster based to uh, something very, <laughs> something very beautiful is that uh, he was in the, in the documentary, he was visiting um, a small village in Africa which is uh, his uh, wife's uh, can, uh, in his wife's country. And uh, he was uh, amazed by how they um, used pointillism uh, to paint themselves. So this is the way the kids wanted to paint the face of the woman or a boy or a girl, which is is it is it a boy? Is it a girl? They didn't get. They they weren't clear about that, and they all got a little bit of painting in this um, in this work of art, and I liked it very much. And they wrote the words, the words that they found in their song in his songs, and all of this was just uh, how can I say um, a, a fan art for us. It wasn't meant to be, you know, for a, um, for exposing it. Uh, and uh, we couldn't imagine that it will reach so far. And this is the beauty of it. <laughs> um, tell us a little bit about your um, junior um, journalists program. Uh, yeah. Um, so journalists of the, of the future are um, classes uh, on the sixth year of elementary school. Uh, they uh, gather, uh, they, they try to see and observe the society around them and bring all this information back into the newspaper. Uh, they make interviews from writers, from artists, from scientists. Uh, they gather all the information about them. 
they make they make an um, uh, you know they they make their own gallery of information, uh, and this gallery has uh, printed material, has uh, stickers, has everything, and uh, they make um, um, they write poetry, they make small films, uh, they experiment with every <laughs> in every way. Uh, because uh, they believe that if they are to promote something or to um, open infor the information to others, they have to experience themselves what they are offering. And so through this, through, th through the journalists, um, we, we do so many beautiful things. Uh, we make this uh, art to wear empowerment art uh, jackets where we combine uh, writings from books and um, uh, images of ourselves or images from the from illustrations for the from the books and we combine them and make empowerment art and we donate these jackets together with library with small bookcases with full of books for empowerment in places that need empowerment and i don't i haven't seen although i haven't seen one place that doesn't need empowerment even a simple home needs empowerment nowadays uh, so we make these things and um, uh, we combine schools and uh, we combine art uh, we made this magazine the um, a journalist of the future um, printed the first edition of the magazine, which uh, where all this work is presented there, and I can send it to you, Argiro, uh, in even in digital form, so yes, you please. can see. It. Yes, yes, send it in digital it's form. Fantastic. Yeah, we it's fantastic. It. It's fantastic. Yeah, and we, um, in this uh, magazine, I, uh, I I make suggestions, I give ideas, I give some educational material, and uh, we uh, we have the um, uh, we we are presenting different kind of schools and different kind of uh, options. Uh, even um, we have uh, work from the refugee camp, and uh, um, the thing uh, we we share this information, we share this magazine to many schools and we ask them, observe, observe around you. Um, we ha I have in this edition, I have little dreams of the refugee camp uh, kids. And uh, I asked the students, are they so different from us? What do you think? Do you share their dreams? And uh, things like that. We, we, um, I combine real life art and uh, my hope for the future. <laughs> this is what we are doing. Beautiful. Thank you, Angela. I'm just going to, um, I want to say thank you for being our artist for today. And before we get to mm -hmm. a little bit of more, a little more of a discussion from our participants today, I want to remind you all that next Monday, April 10th, is Artivism's Wearable Art for a Purpose Roundtable discussion. Uh, this is, of course, via Zoom. The event is the preface to the fashion show and visual arts exhibition that will that will begin on April 19th at Adelphi University's um, uh, University Center. And then that exhibit will move on to a few other venues, uh, Ofit Gallery, a Teachers College, Goddesman Libraries, um, Columbia University, and the Center for Women of New York. Um, this visual arts exhibition uh, provokes conversations about consumer trends, fast fashion and other commercial um, ailments. Uh, for more information on Artivism, you can visit the website. All you have to do is Google Adelphi Artivism. You can follow us on Facebook at Artivism for the number four. Um, um, sorry, <laughs> Artivism for Social <laughs> Transformation on YouTube, on Instagram, 
um, you may still submit. We're still open. We're accepting artwork for the exhibition. Um, so thank you, Angela. And I believe Dr. Melissa is yes, on. No I hope you heard most of these, your, your work, along with Garifayas also, and hopefully others that are joining us here today, do intersect, right? Um, you can share your thoughts, uh, you know, your, your work strategies. I particularly like that you encourage your students to speak in the languages that they know, meaning their TikTok, right? Their, uh, you know, their, their, the way they text, the way they communicate nowadays. If you allow them to express themselves in their own language, you can then teach them something new. You are learning from them. They are learning from you. Let's see. Um, when they write poetry, you said you encourage them to write poetry or storytelling. Oh my God, storytelling is an art that unfortunately is dying, right? I remember, yeah, when I was young. Um, okay, haven't, okay. <laughs> we'll get to <laughs> Melissa. Uh, Melissa is at work. Um, it's still school hours here. Um, Yes, yeah, storytelling. You know, when, when I was a child, we grew up with my grandmother's stories, right? Um, some which were, or most were, that were exaggerations of the truth, right? Uh, there were ghost stories. There were, you know, uh, how she was raised and what time was, what, what things were like during her lifetime, you know, her plights leaving their homeland, like being a refugee twice, living through, you know, world wars. Uh, those stories um, ground us, inspire us, right? Uh, uh, spark our uh, um, imagination, right? Um, what stories do they tell? Um, they usually like uh, horror stories. <laughs> this is their yes. favorite, you know. Um, they, um, but many times, um, you know, they like to laugh. Um, uh, many times they are uh, trying to express themselves and mm -hmm. their deeper feelings. And I sense that. Um, the thing is that um, they have to be guided. They, they as you said uh, uh, before, uh, technology, Mm. Um, is uh, something that um, um, takes their. Μπορώ να μιλήσω στα ελληνικά έτσι λίγο για να το. If you do, you can speak Greek and then I'll translate. Αυτό που θέλω να πω είναι ότι τους απορροφά πάρα πολύ τεχνολογία. What 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 Angela just said is that technology um, swallows them up. Right. <laughs> Go ahead. Ε, οπότε πρέπει να τους μάθεις από την αρχή τι συμβαίνει με τη γλώσσα. Ξεκινάω λοιπόν. To, yes, and then you have to almost teach them from the beginning um, about language, how to express themselves through language, through their written or creative, even artwork, right? How to express themselves. You're teaching them a new language, basically. Ε, παίζουμε ένα παιχνίδι, στο οποίο φορούμε ένα καπελάκι, ε, και ξεκινάμε από πολύ απλές λέξεις. Ε, το παιχνίδι αυτό έχει μία ε, λέξη απλή γραμμένη μέσα σε ένα συνεφάκι και το στερεώνουμε πάνω στο καπελάκι. Okay, ε, they play a game where uh, they, there is a hat and the hat has a word on it and that hat is then worn by the different, um, uh, by the different students in the group. Ναι. Ε, ο, αυτός που φοράει το καπέλο δεν βλέπει τη λέξη. Yes, yes. Ο, αυτός που είναι απέναντί του προσπαθεί να την εξηγήσει. Είναι ένα γνωστό παιχνίδι, αλλά που το έχω μεταμορφώσει και το έχω περάσει μέχρι και στα δικαιώματα. Δηλαδή, oh. έχω, γράψει, έχω γράψει σε συνεφάκια τα δικαιώματα. Ξέρουν τα παιδιά ότι πρέπει να βρούνε το δικαίωμα, αλλά πρέπει να μαντέψουν Ποιο δικαίωμα είναι, βλέποντας τον άλλον, να μην μιλά και να προσπαθεί να το περιγράψει μόνο με κίνηση. Okay, so it's that hat game where, the, where you put the, 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 a word on the hat and then the other people in the group have to explain, kind of like um, charades, right? Um, to the person wearing the hat, what is that word? And what she did was this, she transformed this game where the word is that, that, um, is, um, uh, that describes a human right. Right. 
um, and then the others have to, through their body movements, language, facial expressions, express to the person wearing this hat what that human right is that he can't see. That's interesting. That Can you give us an example of one? Uh, for example, uh, the freedom of speech. Ah, which is very, very difficult uh, for the other to understand what he's doing. And th through this process, they laugh, you know, they try to find the right move to do things and things. And, and they, uh, they, they are so amazing in what they, uh, uh, what, uh, what they do. And they are crazy about this game. They don't want to end it. <laughs> and after this game is over and we say, did you see did you say something did you observe something i say to them and they say what how difficult is to communicate without language mm. without words and that's why we have to learn as many words as we can so that we can be as explicit as we can with what we are saying so i i say this is how I change the game. They, they understand this. They like this. They like that I'm not forcing them. Oh no, you, today you will learn these words and this is it. After that, I, for example, in poetry that you said, what I did was what? I gave them uh, scattered uh, words. In it, I, I work always in groups, always in groups. I don't let only one to to have um, uh, to make a project. I make projects with group of students. Uh, I give them words. I give them some basic words that I have this poem to have, and they have to find the way to make it a poem, to make it <laughs> sound like a poem. Um, and um, they may make a haiku or they may make a, um, um, the poem, a more traditional poem, but they are amazing because as they try as a team to make something have a meaning, this process is the most valuable process of all. Mm. And um, after two or three times, then we have the result as well. Uh, Melissa is asking, um, she doesn't know, maybe, do you have experience? Uh, have you ever experienced any pushback or people feeling that their perspective is not valid? And how do you resolve that kind of unsupportive thinking? Um, uh, do you mean in the class? Uh, in the class, Southern? students, correct, Melissa? Mm -hmm. With students, yes. Okay. Um, many students that come from uh, um, different cultural environments and uh, different countries uh, are very scared at mm. first. Very, very scared. They get in and uh, I see, I read in their eyes uh, something like, what is he going to, to do now? And I am not going to understand it. Mm. So why am I here? This, this this disappointment this disappointment is written all over their face mm -hmm. so the thing i do is that I, I, as i call people to observe i myself observe a, the students of, of each class and i see in their eyes things so uh, let me sell, tell you an, an example mm -hmm. i had um, um, a, an asian boy uh, who was um, um, a little remote he was uh, looking at the ceiling uh, and he was and i was talking to him as i was talking to everybody else little by little he focused and although they didn't nobody told me that he was speaking only in english and i was talking to him in greek so this was a barrier you know but even that, I I I I managed to um, to make him focus, and this was a very good thing for me. And um, when I discovered that he was speaking English, I started speaking English to him, and then he asked me. Uh, um, he said to me that I will not take part in the group uh, project. Uh, I am not interested, 
And I said to him, write what, whatever you want, whatever you want. And the story is, is it was about a treasure, um, uh, a treasure case that was lost, and in the treasure case uh, there were uh, um, there were toys, uh, and uh, they had to make a story out of it. And he was starting, and uh, he was making a um, um, a flag uh, of a country. Uh, and I said to him, "Wow, what a beautiful flag! Let's say that the hero." took the plane and went to Ohio, it was an Ohio flag, and went to Ohio to search for this treasure of toys that he had. And he was looking at me like that. And he asked me, can I write in English? I said, yes, of course you can. And he wrote to me two pages, a story of two pages. And you know what? I understood that the change because when they were leaving, he handed this to me and he said, Mrs. Angela, bye. A boy that wasn't even speaking when he got in. And next, uh, next uh, day, the teacher came to me, a teacher came to me and said, I have a big, really big problem with one kid. I said, who? I said the one, the Asian kid, uh, uh, he's very violent and he, he, he doesn't want to participate. And I said, are you serious? So this is the great question. Um, I think the, the, the best thing to eliminate every, every difficulty is to make a connection. Make a connection and don't expect anything. Let them just express themselves, make a connection, let them express themselves little by little, little by little, and then it will come a day when they will surprise you. Uh, I, I, I feel it in my heart with every student that I have. Oh, most certainly. And, and just giving them the means or, uh, you know, a parallel or an alternative way of expressing themselves and working with them in that way is just it's 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 very rewarding. Right. For you, yes. for them, for the, the rest of the class, for everyone involved. They feel that they have the, uh, um, uh, the right to choose, the right to express themselves in their way. This is very critical, crucial. I, I see it in every level, in every level. Do you ever use music? I use uh, music very often. I have a remarkable song uh, made from a Greek um, composer and um, a Greek uh, singer, uh, which is extraordinary song. And I make them sing it as mm -hmm. we, uh, uh, we dance it because we make moves and uh, they have to follow my moves and say what I'm saying. And they are fantastic. They are so empowered. They leave the, uh, the class singing this, um, uh, this um, song. And what the song says, in all, all over the song, it says that um, um, it has a very powerful move. Uh, it says that um, um, who makes my, I observe my people, how they walk uh, and how they get in the bus and things like that. And uh, I'm wondering who makes them cry? I mm. wonder who makes them uh, be afraid? I wonder who makes them be close to their own environment? And you know the answer? You. Mm. And you and you and you and this and this move makes them and and they are uh, getting very excited with this you 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 and you and in the end uh, the song says who is changing the world who is moving the world um, forward you ah, nice and this is fantastic because everybody leaves the room saying, you, 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 you. And this is, this is the power of music. Okay, it is fantastic what, what it makes. 
I use uh, music. Uh, I have a digital, a digital, digital instrument, which uh, makes different kind of uh, uh, um, instruments. It, it is a piano. It is a saxophone. It is some like that, and we make the sound of the heroes and heroines. Mm -hmm. What sound has this hero? What sound has this hero and why? And I use music very much in what I'm doing. Very interesting. Any other questions or comments? Λίγο ότι ξέρει τα αγγλικά με δυσκολεύουν. Πρέπει να συνηθίσω για να πω μέσα στη ροή. Συγγνώμη που μιλάω και εγώ στα ελληνικά. That's okay. That's okay. That if Alia was just saying that you know she she um, thought this was a wonderful presentation, very inspiring. Um, σε αυτό που έλεγε για το ψηφιακό, για τα παιδιά και για το TikTok και αυτά, ότι πλέον. Ε, αυτά είναι εργαλεία που μπορούν να αξιοποιηθούν και στη δημιουργική γραφή. Είμαστε σε μια εποχή που τα παιδιά μάλλον έχουν, ε, έχουν με, μεγαλώνουν σε αυτή την εποχή. Δεν είναι κάτι καινούριο για αυτά. Mm. Για μας είναι το καινούριο. Εμάς μας φαίνεται περίεργο. Δεν φαίνεται στα παιδιά. Δηλαδή, νομίζω ότι εμείς προσπαθούμε να αντιληφθούμε πώς τα παιδιά λειτουργούν, αλλά για αυτά είναι πάρα πολύ φυσιολογικό. Ότι ήταν για μας το βιβλίο ή το παιχνίδι στη γειτονιά ή αυτά που εμείς έχουμε στις αναμνήσεις μας, ε, για τα παιδιά είναι, είναι ψηφιακή αυτό, ναι. Ναι, 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 θέλω να πω ότι για μας είναι, είναι το περίεργο. Διάβαζα τώρα, δεν θυμάμαι βέβαια να σας πω ποιος, ε, το, που, που είχα διαβάσει τον όρο, αλλά ότι, ότι τα παιδιά, ε, ο, εμείς είμαστε ψηφιακοί μετανάστες, τα παιδιά είναι ψηφιακοί αυτόχθονες. <laughs> θέλω να πω ότι εμείς προσπαθούμε να... Να, να, να επιβιώσουμε, να, να συνηθίσουμε σε αυτή την κατάσταση. Τα παιδιά αξιοποιούν πολύ ωραία όλα αυτά τα εργαλεία που τους δίνονται και τελικά εκφράζονται. Εγώ δεν το θεωρώ ότι είναι απειλή γιατί ακούγονται διάφορα και για αυτά. Ε, υπάρχουν και μαθήματα και σεμινάρια και μεταπτυχιακά για, την ψηφιακή, για τη δημιουργική γραφή σε ψηφιακά περιβάλλοντα. Πώς μπορείς να αξιοποιήσεις... Ναι, υπάρχει, υπάρχει, το media, στις σκέψεις, υπάρχει το media literacy, ναι, το οποίο υπάρχει, είναι πάρα πολύ σημαντικό. Ναι, βεβαίως. Δηλαδή υπάρχουν μυθιστορήματα που έχουν γραφτεί στο κινητό τηλέφωνο, νομίζω λέγονται oh. ε, message novels, κάπως, ε, όχι mobile novels, κάπως, novels, κάπως έτσι. Υπάρχουν, ή ας πούμε το Twitter, για παράδειγμα, ε, είναι φοβερή, ε, φοβερός τρόπος εξάσκησης τη, ε, της οικονομίας των λέξεων και για τη δημιουργική γραφή, γιατί πρέπει να γράψεις σε, μέσα σε συγκεκριμένου χαρακτήρες ε, λέξεις, ένα κείμενο. Ένα, να κάνεις, οπότε σκέφτεσαι πολύ to the point, ας πούμε. Δεν, δεν χρησιμοποιείς έτσι φλίαρες και περιτές λέξεις και σκέφτεσαι πιο ουσιαστικά περισσότερο, ε, πιο, πιο δημιουργικά θέλω να πω, για να γράψεις πιο λίγες λέξεις. And okay. I just summarize... Just to summarize very quickly, uh, Garifalla is saying that, you know, children today have been, been born into technology and TikTok and, you know, social media and the way they, they think, you know, to get straight to the point, right? Because everything they have to write in all their social media posts are, you know, very limited in the amount of words. And it's almost as though, you know, we have to adapt to that, their way of thinking because that's their way. Right. We're used to the way we learned and what we learned and playing outside and how we spent our days. We have to um, acknowledge and adapt. And like you said earlier, Aguela, speak in their own language. Right. Mm -hmm. So then we can then expand from there. What more is there to all of this? Is my for correct? Me there are, yes. For me, there are two points. One, what Warifalia said, mm -hmm. uh, we have to use their means, their way of expressing themselves. And I know that we want to teach them more. Yes. I know that we want, to teach, uh, we want to teach them something which is different. Okay, have, but have, it, have this, keep this in your mind, but do it a little by little by coming, uh, it's what I said earlier, have this, um, 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 connection, and then little by little, you can imply your things to it. 
-hmm. and you can make it uh, you can uh, the, the children follow you mm -hmm. the children follow you as long as they understand that you respect their way mm -hmm. right this, this is from you. my experience this is very important yes for sure for sure i agree any other questions or comments Okay, thank you, uh, um, Aguela, for your presentation today. If you were to um, tell us your one takeaway from your presentation today, what would that be? Uh, it would be um, to give uh, space to critical and creative thinking. If we want to be happy as a society, if we want to be happy as human beings, I think this will will make our future uh, a better future. Thank you, Aguela, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you, Aguela. Thank you, everyone. Thank for you very the time much. To be here with us, to Felipe, who's Zooming in from Costa Rica, um, to the rest of you from Greece and Cyprus and the US. Um, thank you to Sync for Hope, uh, Gottesman Libraries, Teachers College, Columbia University and Adelphi University um, for being our sponsors, Dr. Stephanie Lake, and um, uh, to all of our supporters. Uh, hope to see you next week. Um, if you would like to uh, present here, you can email us at, um, at uh, artivism at adelphi.edu. Thank you. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you, Adela. Thank you.